Mitigation means masks. Defence is a multi-layer multi approach to it. At the top, we have kind of the threat around us, and when our borders are tightly controlled, that's a great way of kind of mitigating against that. Um, but equally, you know, it, 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 nothing, no single defence can be can be perfect. And you know, the, the document talks about the next level underneath that are, are border controls, both restrictions in terms of who can come through, and then the controls in terms of what happens to them when they they come through. So our, our isolation type type processes and our testing pathways. Underneath that, our next level of defence, the key one that a lot of a lot of hope and a lot of emphasis on is the vaccination programme. Uh, and then underneath that, though, the, the testing and tracing are 111 systems that is probably going to be here for the foreseeable future, if not in, indefinitely, that, that tells us is, is there a problem there, that tells us where that might have come from and how to react best. Then underneath that, you know, the last resort, and there's been a lot of narrative over the last kind of week around the circuit breaker, and, and, and it isn't necessarily just one, well, one size that, that's always applied. There are different levels depending on what, what we see recognising there is a real cost to that, not just a financial cost, an economic cost, but a real human cost as well and, and social cost when we, when government steps in and puts restrictions in like that. So it really is that, that last resort and hopefully the levels above it mean that we have to less and less need to do that. So effectively there will be some form of Covid regulations in place for the foreseeable future, if not forever. As well as this, at any point the government could change the rules, make them harsher and more draconian. It's not okay to give big daddy government this kind of power over your life for any reason. This is quite simply because they will find reasons to extend these powers and you will have no way of regaining these freedoms. And there's a whole topic around vaccination passports which is really, I think there's a lot of uh, discussion still to have in a, in a domestic sense about you know, people presenting something to be able to get into to a restaurant or something, and we're not saying for one minute that's that's part of it. But a sort of a green card for international. But on travel. borders, I, I think yeah. absolutely, there's increasing narrative again around us around carriers who may choose to do it anyway, and it may become a feature of travel. And at that point, if we does that reduce the risk? Does it change the risk? And 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 that may play a part. But but oh, are any plans being considered at this stage? We're, we're, we're keeping an eye on it, and, right. and again, it's one of these conversations at, at an early stage, but uh, it, it's not something we necessarily as a small island can control. It will happen around us, and we, yeah. we need to be prepared to make sure we're ready to, to participate if, if that does, does indeed happen. So yes, it'll be a hugely difficult, uh, difficult period today. We've also announced about the classic TT and the MGP so, and, and the Southern 100 yesterday. So, you know, terrible, terrible, difficult decisions. But we've said before in terms of being there to try and support the industry as best we can. I know politically that that's the desire to carry on. But equally, by putting this framework out, is to say that, that you know, there is some hope. This isn't, uh, we're not going to live with elimination forever. We do need to move beyond that. We need to move to the point, as Dr. Hewitt said, where we, we can live with it a bit more, we can cope, but it has to also be from an educated perspective and it has to be from an, in, an informed perspective as we do that. D Dr Hewitt, I, I, um, I think the... Well, it's good you're not planning on implementing vaccine passports at this stage, small achievements and all, but something this evil should not even be being discussed, especially by the state. To coerce people into taking a vaccine they don't want to take or reveal private health information is not only coercion, but is also evil. The simple fact of the matter is, you cannot have any form of democracy when the state, elected or otherwise, is coercing people to do things they don't want to do and dictating to people what they can do. Effectively, the point of democracy is to protect individual rights, not individual rights to protect democracy. As we learn to live with COVID-19, what will the new normal be? Or is that the, the multi-million dollar question? Dr. Ladies Hewitt. first. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball. Yeah, yeah it is, I think it is, it is the million dollar question. We have a good view, a good idea. And we can see other countries around the world saying what their roadmaps look like and what they think. You know, that helps inform it. And, and we hope it is as, as, as normal and, and as it was in the past as, 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 as possible. But as we said before, there may well be something we, some ongoing adjustments, and uh, we just don't know yet. But uh, you know, let's let's take it every day. We get a step forward to knowing that. Super. Well, um, Director of Public Health, Dr. Henrietta Hewitt, and uh, Chief Executive of the Department for Enterprise, Mark Lewin. Thank you very much, both of you, for your for your time this afternoon.